TikTok, it's that time again. People have always had a way to keep track of time. Originally, you'd just look up at the sun and your shadow to decide how early or late it was. Then, the Egyptians did the same thing, just organized. They also came up with the 24-hour day idea, making it nice and simple. But humanity wanted to make time so specific so that down the road, you could be marked late for class. So all the efforts of many cultures provided new ways to more accurately tell time. Sundials were just even better obelisks. Water clocks were just bowls that work somehow. I don't know, man. Then the Chinese invented the incense clock, which changes smells depending on how long it's been burning. But then I complained about it because I can't smell very well and I, I told you I don't want to be left out. So then the Persians said, hey, Here's my astrolabe that can tell you with great accuracy where the stars and planets and sun and moon are. This was the best moment of my life. Like what? They literally had a pocket watch sized functional and portable calendar, but this just wasn't enough for the Chinese. So they upgraded the incense clock into a candle. It burns over time, whoopee. However, eventually we got hourglasses, and then we got a number circle. Clocks used to need some very complex systems to stay functional, and they still do. <laughs> There's dozens of gears rotating these arms to point towards numbers that we decided were correct for certain times of the day. This is as consistent as it gets, and the circle is totally correct. Except it isn't. <laughs> decided that we should have 24 hour days. And even if you accept that, there's only 12 sections on the clock. Some people split the day into 1 to 12, then 1 to 12 again, and some do 1 to 24, I think? Why is there so much confusion here? There's a much better system here that you're all ignoring. I have already fixed one form of time measurement, so I can do it again. Here we go. Clock 2. All right, so I'm bringing out the clock, but first I think we gotta handle the actual time system we're using in the first place, you know, minutes, hours, and seconds. We've established that the Egyptians invented 24 hour days, but you might be wondering how the whole 60 minute and second thing happened in the first place. Basically, the Babylonians liked using the sexagesimal system, which seems pretty sus if you ask me, but the Greeks were into that too. So they decided to use it for our time measurement needs. But obviously, I, a humble oat, no more than them. So I will gladly replace their flawed system. So let's make it simpler, shall we? 20 hour days. 10 for the day, 10 for the night. Very simple. Let's make a good note of that real quick. 20 hour days. Now we need to figure out the seconds and minutes, which is a bit harder. Seconds. They simply cannot be replaced. A second is just mmm Like you just know how long a second is. So seconds stay the same. Now we need to figure out how many seconds are in one of our new hours so that we can figure out how to divide up the hours into our new form of minutes. So normally there's 86,400 seconds per day and we're gonna divide that by our new 20 hours and that gives us 4,320 seconds per hour. I then spent many seconds calculating the best even distribution into minutes for the new hours. So we're going to stick with that 20 theme on hours. So there's going to be 20 minutes per hour. This comes out to 20 hours per day, 20 minutes per hour, and 216 seconds per minute. Two, two, two. Unmatched, Unmatched synchronicity. synchronicity. We'll keep this as a reference, but we're going to change a lot. So let's just put it over here for now. So let's draw it out. So we got to split it up into better segments than just 10 because the old clock only does 12 hours when there's only 24, but we're better than that. So we're going to do all 20 hours of the clock. But if we split it up, you can imagine that 20 numbers would be way too crowded and chaotic and complicated. So literally, we're going to split the time. By extending the clock into this pill shape, we have so much room to work with. So I'll start writing in these numbers and I'll explain my reasoning after. Okay, there's all the numbers. I know this may look weird, but what I've done is made it so the top is day and the bottom is night. Actually, I have an idea. There we go, day and night with light and dark mode of the clock. So for example, one is the beginning of the day, so it's essentially the new midnight. This means we put it at the bottom of the night section, right in the middle, mid-night. The numbers go around, then at six, it's officially daytime. Keep going, and 11 is noon, 
or mid day. Then at 16, we've officially got nighttime. Then the last number is 20, where it hits one, which is the next day. As you can see, this fixes a lot of problems. First off, the first hour of the day is no longer the last hour of the numbers. Like why would they mark 12 as the new day when one is clearly the first number? So the first hour of the day for real this time is one. With our clock, we can also clearly see how the sun works. On the left, the sun rises, then it goes across the sky, and then it sets in the east. So now I have rearranged the numbers, and the clock now goes counterclockwise. We can see clearly how the sun really works now. It rises in the east, right here at 6, goes up around the sky, and sets around 16. That's how you remember. The, the sun starts with S and 6 and 16. They... They start with this. They're the sun hours. So you might have noticed that it might be hard to have our little clock hands with this pill shape going on. But I have an extremely better mechanism that just works better anyway. So here we have the sun. And the sun is going to do exactly what we've clarified. It's going to go along the path, rise in the east, set in the west. And it's going to do that on an actual track. Now I'm not much of a mechanism man, but I know you can do this kind of thing in many ways. Okay, there. That's the track that the sun, or the hour hand, takes. Now we can add an essential feature. Minutes. Since I geniusly calculated our time system to have 20 minutes and 20 hours, we can make a separate, faster moving track to be the minute hand. So we need another sort of icon like the sun to represent the minute hand. Maybe it could represent a culture or someone that's had a major impact on time measurement. It's me. The oat is the minute measurer. Cool, so that's the basic idea of the clock. The hour hand is the sun, minute hand is the oat going around. Cool, so that's the basic idea. But you know, it's time for some bonus, bonus features. features. Well, as you might be noticing, there's a massive lack of attention to the middle of the clock. But there's an even bigger issue that we can solve with it. You can't even read a regular clock. Traditional clocks are becoming more and more redundant because digital clocks are making it much easier to see and read. So we're gonna put our own digital clock in the center of the clock too. So this could be the old digital style with all the lines and stuff, or you could just have some sort of modern screen because that's a lot easier. Now keep in mind, with our new time system, we need two slots for the hours because it goes to 20, two slots for our minutes because it also goes to 20, and three slots for our seconds because it goes to 216. Great, now everyone can read the clock no matter what. Now that fills in the middle a lot, but there's still plenty of space up here and down here that you can just have some fun with. Clocks these days don't have any decoration to them but feel free to decorate this however you want all right that's how i'm decorating my clock feel free to do it however you want just know that mine's probably better than yours cool guys well this clock is 216 better than the old clock it's significantly better in every single aspect we made the full day fit into one clock the sun is represented and everyone can read it since we have the digital screen thanks hunter the king for the suggestion some other people might have as well and yeah you're welcome yet again